Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and today I'm going to be covering a game between Ian Napomniachi versus Dmitry Froyanov in the 2011 Russian Team Championship. And so the game, Napomniachi has absolutely been on fire, very solid 2700 player, but Froyanov is uh, no slouch himself, he's in the mid 2600s. So somewhat of a heavyweight battle here, and uh, this is going into the Sicilian... And with knight f6, knight c3, and a6 here, this signaling uh, either going into the e with e6 would be the shamanigan, or more likely, and more topical these days it seems, playing directly into e5 with the knight or variation. And Pomniachi, h3. So there is a ridiculous amount of moves here that white can play in variations that have been studied about uh, you know 30 moves deep in some lines. Bishop e2 is a move, bishop c4 is a move, bishop g5, been analyzed a ton. f4 is an idea, I've even seen a4, you can see g3, okay, I think you get the idea. So, he plays h3 in this position, and the idea is simply to, instead of playing g3, bishop g2, then h3, and then g4, to simply play h3 h3 and g4 in one go so h3 it, it seems somewhat passive but i i believe it's been made you know even more popular these days as the main lines with bishop g5 especially and bishop c4 have been analyzed somewhat to a draw for the most part uh, a, a lot of these lines have been so heavily analyzed that white is searching for other ways to gain an advantage against the knight dwarf and so the h3 and the g4 line is not so textbook these days and so black responded with e6 to maintain control of the d5 square and um, it, apparently this is the best idea that i've seen at the top level instead of playing e5 directly and conceding the d5 square um, e6 seems to be a little more popular and so with g4 so white has achieved this in one go and if black had played uh you know let's say h5 here to limit that well then g3 and this h5 pawn it some variations this is okay but usually it's kind of a weakness on h5 so e6 g4 and b5 and so black is planning to he's maintaining control of the d5 square which is very important it's definitely going to help him out in the long term especially and um, you know he's planning on if white plays bishop g2 which he almost certainly will then bishop b7 to combat the diagonal and also eliminate any tactics along this diagonal trying to uh, hit up the position of the black's rook on a8 so now here after castles and knight fd7 so an interesting idea i mean it but uh, you know it's well founded i mean if, if knight bd7 a natural move not paying attention simply g5 and white is going to gain a huge advantage here based on his his superiority in, in development and time and in space everything is working for him and the knight's gonna be forced back and uh good luck good luck for black in this position simply f4 f5 it's gonna be easy easy for white to play possibly even rookie one with some ideas of tactics with knight d5 so that's why knight fd7 he probably wants to play the knight to c5 maybe develop this knight to d7 um, and, and possibly put a knight on b6 as well so a variety a variety of options a flexible move and so with f4 white hey let's go ahead and get on with it play f5 force e5 move the knight and probably play knight to d5 most likely I mean, you know f4 a very natural move and one thing to be noted and you'll see this with super gems they'll anticipate what their opponent is thinking what what his plan is going to be and if let's say he had moved bishop e3 immediately well then knight b6 and knight to c4 is going to harass that bishop and also harass this pawn on on b2 and so white obviously if possible he wants to avoid that and that's why he leaves the bishop at home he doesn't develop it true that it would be nice if he could but um you know, in light of knight b6 and knight c4, it's really going to be kind of a pain in the neck. So with f5, white essentially induces e5. And now f6. Napomniachi is definitely known as a pretty sharp, sharp tactical player. And f6 does not disappoint. And so the idea with f6 is very simple. He wants to discoordinate the black pieces a little bit and create an excellent square for the knight on f5. So the pawn, you know, the reason he marks his pawn up the board was to create a hole on d5 as well. So 
White has effectively sacrificed a pawn here. He's not gaining the pawn back. That, that's not happening in this position. But that's not what he's playing for. He's playing for long-term positional compensation in the form of an excellently placed knight on f5 and also controlling the d5 square by, by inducing black to play e6, e5. Now, he's also got the open f file. And in exchange, black has a pawn. So, personally, I'd probably take the pawn. But this is leading to a very unbalanced position and very dynamic and why it certainly has the the capacity to play dynamically with g5 which uh, essentially forces 98 because it, it you know i mean i i guess not i mean i guess uh if knight fd7 and, and knight takes now white's gonna be dropping a piece with queen check and the queen's gonna be picking up the knight on d6 so Knight d7 was a possibility, but the knight on e8 is also serving a vital defense, defensive function on the g7 pawn. So it, it can't fault it too much. And, and also this knight probably can come to d7 and, and maybe zigzag up to the uh, c4 square if he likes. So now queen g4, it, which is, I mean, pretty obvious more or less attacking move but white is not wasting time with with the h pawn and, and throwing the h pawn up the board he wants to get the queen there and maybe now he's introducing some tactical ideas bringing the knight in you know temporary sacrifice on f6 second and knight on h6 so queen g4 is um definitely a dicey move def definitely uh you know mixing it up a little bit so now knight d7 so black needs to get active and he needs to get developed white has second pawn he's he sacked the pawn so he's down a little bit of material so he does have something to prove in that regard but his long-term positional compensation by controlling the d5 square the f5 square with his knight and attack on the king side I'd say it's a roughly equal position if black can withstand the onslaught then uh, he will come out upon up so he will have the chances but easier said than done especially against the uh, attacking prodigy such as the end of Pomniachi. and so rook f2 here white is most likely intending to double the rooks put a little extra pressure on the queen side also defends the c2 pawn against b4 so rook f2 a good move and now d5 and these types of sacrifices are rather commonplace especially the higher up you know the at the top levels because black is simply not happy with you know where where does he go it's going to be tough i mean knight knight c5 doesn't seem to do much if b4 then simply knight d5 and if knight b6 let's just say rook here and now after uh, just a simple line knight c4 and bishop c1 defending that pawn removing the bishop from attack black is still gonna have this problem with the bishop on e7 so knight c7 i mean this is um this line doesn't seem that bad for black and i, I kind of like it but this is not so easy moves like knight h6 check are hanging in the air and if black gets a little carried away on the king side obviously if if g takes h6 g takes h6 queen g7 made to follow shortly and after king there i mean black is going to suffer a decisive loss of material so rook f2 is kind of keeping everything in the air defending getting ready to double rooks so d5 makes sense sack the pawn back try to activate your bishop get a little space for your pieces maybe the knight can come to d6 and so yeah knight d6 here it's uh certainly a logical move this, this knight on f5 is one of white's strongest pieces so he takes it you know i, I mean it, it was also worth mention um doubling the rooks but maybe he didn't want to allow g6 and and possibly uh f5 getting getting pretty complicated so instead by takes takes and now knight e4 a very simple continuation and there's a couple tactics along this diagonal so if black decides to take after knight uh knight f6 i believe he just simply loses because um white is threatening to win the knight on d7 and uh, and also if king over so me knight takes d5 and he wins a piece so that that's pretty easy and obviously if pawn takes pawn takes and uh moving the king over a similar motif mate so the pawn on d5 is untouchable and now black plays knight c5 so material balance has been re-established it's it's equal but white has these bishops are doing a great job of raking through black's queen side while black's bishops are essentially blockaded 
And not only this, but white has a lasting attack on the on the black king. And with this knight f6 check, well, it is, Nepomniachtchi played extremely energetically in this game and, and certainly earned the win. So after knight c5, kind of uh, hoping to trade pieces on the queen side. Unfortunately for black, f5 wasn't an option as it just drops a pawn. So he, he can't open the position that way. Well, what else can he do? I mean, the queen can't come to b6. And the queen going to a5 is just taking it farther from defending the black king. So knight c5 seems to be the best bet. The, the the best the best guess to me to for black to try to trade some of the dynamic attacking potential of white off the board by trading pieces and so knight f6 i'm sure he saw this and, and queen h5 and black skiing cannot be too comfortable um all of these minor pieces these three minor pieces in the black rook and, and almost the black queen as well they can't even help defend the king and while white doesn't have a ton of pieces, but the knight and the queen are always excellent combination, uh, excellently coordinated attacking together. So queen h5, and now Froyanov is black, accepts the peace sacrifice. And from here, I think maybe it's possibly a forced loss. I, I don't know, maybe black could have tried to get out of it some other way, but I, I didn't really see it. So black, uh, white, white has got two pawns for the peace and an extremely powerful attack. Not to mention it's very easy for him to mobilize this rook and help the attack out. So rook g7 seems forced. Obviously rook c7 is going to lead to mate. So rook, rook g7 only move. And rook takes, rook takes. And now g6. And maybe this is what Froyanov had missed. Because it, it seems if, if rook f1 maybe Froyanov's got the lateral defense and uh it's gonna be a little tougher for white to attack but g6 the the execution of the attack was fantastic in this game by napomniachi and g6 at first it seems well black can just take the pawn but after queen h6 it becomes apparent that's just not going to be sufficient any kind of move the king on the f file rook f1 check and white's going to at least win this pawn um and after king g8 seems to be the best try blacks hoping for a perpetual and <laughs> not gonna happen so rook f rook f1 and so now bishop f8 was tried by froyanov and i believe that just uh, lost quickly other attempts i mean this is definitely not fun to play for black especially because maybe queen g8 After queen h6, queen h7, possibly takes, takes. And white can win the piece back, but I, I think he's got more. I'm not using a computer to help analyze this, as I never do, but I, I think that, I mean, white's just got to have a win. After queen, queen g8, there's got to be... Well, I mean, just take the, take the bishop on d6, and that's that's going to be all she wrote. The, the black king is too weak. So after bishop f8, rook f7, very natural move. Queen h4, the last try to defend the mate on f h7. And in this position, black resigned because he has absolutely nowhere to move. Queen d4 check doesn't – there's there's no way to defend the mate on h7. Queen d4 check, simply king h2 and made him want to follow so a fantastic attacking game by napomniachi very tactical and uh Froyana just it seemed like he just didn't know what hit him especially after after white sacrificed that pawn so early in the opening so a fantastic game by ian napomniachi he's having a great tournament this year and uh this is will stewart from online chess lessons.net and thanks for listening